Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel maximum automation. In my last video, I talked about how to scroll a web page where I went through the different methods to perform the scroll operation. The methods which we have seen can be used in Selenium 3 and 4 both. But in Selenium version 4.2 or greater, we have a few extra methods provided as part of the actions class which can be used to perform scroll operations on a web page. So today in this video, I'm going to show you all how to perform scroll operations on a web page using the action class methods, which is only available in Selenium version 4.2 or greater. Also, one thing to remember here is that the action class methods, which I'm going to show you all, will only work on the Chromium browsers. These methods of action class won't work on other browsers. So let's get started. As we know that when we automate our web application, then most of the time the element on which we want to perform the operation is available on the bottom of the page. Or we can say that they are available out of the viewport. Let's say if I want to click on an element which is not available on the current viewport of the browser, then the Selenium click method will throw the exception. And to avoid it, we need to first scroll the web page so that we can see our element on the browser. And then we can perform the operation. So let's see how we can perform the scroll operation on the web page using action class. Here is my code where I first created the Chrome driver object and then navigated to the website amazon.com. Now to perform the scroll operation using the action class, first I need to create an object of the class. After that, using an action class object, I can call these scroll methods to perform the scroll operation on a web page. So we have these three methods available in action class for scroll operation. One is scroll to element, which takes a web element as the argument, and then regardless of whether the element is above or below the current view screen, the viewport will be scrolled. So the bottom of the element is at the bottom of the screen. Then another one is scroll by amount, which scrolls the web page based on the provided X and Y coordinate values. And the third one is the scroll from origin, which is used to perform a scroll from an element by a given amount. Now I'll show you how each method works. So first of all, I'm going to use the scroll to element method. You can use this method when your elements are not inside the viewport. This method takes your web element as the argument and the viewport will be scrolled. So the bottom of the element is at the bottom of the screen. And to call this method, first I'll create a web element object. Using driver dot find element method, where I'll provide the element locator. To get the locator value, let's move to the application. Let's say that this is the web page, and I want to scroll my web page to bring this back to top element on the viewport. Now to find the locator for this element, I'll open the dev tool. And then we'll inspect this element. Here you can see that this element has a unique ID associated with it. So we can use the same ID to locate our element. And then here I'll type by dot ID. 
where I'll provide the ID value of the element which we have copied. So this will return our element which we want to bring in the viewport of the browser. And then we need to pass this element in the scroll to element method, which will scroll the web page to bring the element into the viewport. And then call the perform method to perform the action. After that, let me add a pause here so that we can clearly see how the script performs the scroll operation. And at last, let me quit the web driver object. One thing to notice here is that when we scroll to this element back to top the very first time, you can see initially when we scroll down the web page, then this sign in button was not available. But after we scroll to the bottom of the page, then the sign in button also gets loaded on the screen. So, as we know, that scroll to element will only scroll to the point where the bottom of the element is at the bottom of the screen. But due to the sign in button, which loads after the scroll page, our element will again move out of the viewport. So, in this case, I'll again call the scroll to element method to bring our element inside the viewport. First, I'll add a pause after the scroll operation and when the sign in button is displayed, then I'll again scroll to the element. Now, let's run the test to see how it works. The execution has started. You can see it scrolled the page to bring the element into the viewport, but again it went out of viewport because of the sign in button. Now you can see it again scrolled down to the element. And here, one thing to observe is that the bottom of the element is at the bottom of the screen. So this is how the scroll to element method works. Then we have another method to perform scroll by amount. This method takes X and Y coordinate values to scroll by the value passed for X and Y in the right and down directions. If you want to scroll in the right direction, then change the value for delta X and to scroll downward, change the value for delta y. And to scroll left and up, provide negative values for delta x and delta y respectively. Now let's say I want to scroll my web page in downward direction. Then I can provide zero for delta x and then the amount for delta y. Let's say I want to scroll by 2000 pixels in downward direction. When I execute this code, then this will scroll down my web page by 2000 pixels because I have given the value as 2000 for Y coordinate. Also, when you're not sure about the exact coordinate to scroll, but you have an element on the web page, then you can get the coordinate values for the element, then the same can be used to pass in the scroll by amount method. Let's say I want to scroll down my web page further to this element. Then first I can get the Y coordinate value for this element. By using element. Dot location. Dot Y. This will return the Y coordinate value of this element. And then we can pass this value over here. 
and because I want to scroll further to this element, so I can add an extra amount to scroll more. Let's say I want to scroll down 500 more points from my back to top element. So either I can provide the direct coordinate values or I can add the coordinate values with the reference of another element on the page. Now let's run the test to see how it works. The execution has started. You can see it is crawled the web page almost to the end of the page. As we have added 500 more amounts to the Y coordinate from back to top element. So this is how scroll by amount method works. Now we are left with the third method that is scroll from origin. This method is basically a combination of earlier two methods, which takes three arguments. The first represents the origin point, which we designate as the element, and the last two are the delta x and delta y values. Here, the first argument it takes is the object of scroll origin, which is available under wheel input device namespace. So, first, I have to create an object of scroll origin by typing wheel input device which is available under namespace selenium interaction then i can type dot scroll origin And then we can provide the values for different parameters. Like we have elements as one of the parameters. And against it, I can provide my web element object. Which means that now the origin for this method is our web element. Here we need to pass the scroll origin object and the coordinate values that how much we want to scroll from the origin. Let's say I want to scroll 500 more points from my origin element. Now you can relate why this method is called as the combination of earlier two methods. Now let me run the test to see how it works. Here the execution has started. You can see it scrolled the web page to the end of the page. As we have scrolled from back to top element, which is the origin in this case. And further, scrolled 500 more points to the Y coordinate to scroll down the page. So this is how the scroll from origin method works. Here in this scroll origin, we have other parameters as well which we can use. Let's say if you want to add offset values in origin location, then you can provide the value for X offset and Y offset. The offset is calculated from the center of the provided element. You can use these offset values when you know that the screen must be scrolled offset away from a specific element. So when we use these offset values and if the element is out of the viewport, so it will first scroll to the bottom of the screen. Then the origin of the scroll will be determined by adding the offset to the coordinates of the center of the element. And finally, the page will be scrolled by the provided delta X and delta Y values. Also, apart from providing the web element as the origin point under scroll origin, we can provide the origin location with an offset. Let's say if you want to scroll only a portion of the screen, 
and which is already inside the viewport. Then we can remove the element as the origin point. And we can provide a viewport instead of an element. An offset is specified from the upper left corner of the current viewport. So let's say if you provide the X offset value as 50 and the Y offset value as 50 again, then my origin point will be somewhere at this point because the viewport starts from the upper left corner and I have added the offset values for both X and Y. So my origin point will be determined somewhere at this point. And after that, the page will be scrolled by the provided delta X and delta Y values. Now let's run the test to see how it works. Here the execution has started. You can see that it is scrolled a portion of the web page as we have scrolled from origin as viewport with offset values and further added 500 more amount to the Y coordinate to scroll down the page. So this is how we can use the scroll from origin method without specifying the element. I hope you like this video. Please put your comments in the comment box. Also, please do not forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.